The goal of my YouTube channel is to provide you guys with recommendations for building computers because people want to build computers to play games or get work done. And right now I'm, I'm so torn because on the one hand, there are new products that have just launched. AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, the new NVIDIA RTX 30 series GPUs. We've got some Radeon GPUs launching later this month, but you can't buy anything right now. Excellent. Corsair has new cases. The 4000 series presents a solid mix of looks, functionality, and affordability for new and veteran PC builders alike. A spacious interior and the rapid route cable management guides make for easy assembly with room for up to 620mm or 440mm fans. The 4000D Airflow features an optimized airflow focused front panel while the IQ 4000 exports sexy tempered glass panels and is RGB ready with the included lighting node core. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So this isn't the first time that new products have launched and they've sold out very quickly because of high demand or other contributing factors. However, I think it is the first time that the new products that have launched have been so well reviewed when it comes to performance in contrast to their availability. So you have a lot of people who are upset not at the performance of the products, but just because they wanna buy them and they can't. So my goal today, this being my monthly build series where I provide you guys with parts lists for PCs so you can make informed decisions about what parts to buy to build a computer with, is to give you recommendations using these new products, but also some warnings and some things to look out for if you're planning to buy, and especially if you want to buy at the list price and not from some marked up reseller scalper on eBay. So I've got two builds for you today. One is gonna clock in at about $1,250, and that's just for the core components of the PC itself. That's gonna be a high-end gaming PC on par with what you would have expected from an RTX 2080 Ti build last year, or I guess just earlier this year. Then I've got a higher-end build based on the 5900X that's gonna cost about $2,000, and that one's veering a little bit more towards the workstation slash gaming PC. It's gonna be great at doing either one, but if you think your focus is more purely gaming, then the $1,250 build should get you by just fine. Also worth noting, the GPUs in those two builds are going to be the RTX 3070 and 3080, which are both right here, uh, but I'm also gonna provide preliminary recommendations for the AMD Radeon RX 6000 series cards, which are launching November 18th. And there's a 6800 and a 6800 XT. Because the expectation is for these new launches to sell out very quickly, it's hard for me to recommend to you guys exactly what to do. Now, I always recommend checking out independent reviews for a newly launched piece of hardware, especially a graphics card. But how can you do that? How can you make an informed decision by watching the reviews and then also scoop up one of the cards that's going to immediately sell out the second those reviews go out in the embargo list? Uh, the answer is simple, time travel. In keeping with this series though, uh, I have straw polls linked in the description so I can get your feedback. This was the response from the November question and people wanted a mid-range Ryzen 5000 build, so I'm doing that. We want a high-end Ryzen 5000 build, I'm doing that too. RTX 3070 gaming PC, I got you covered. Big Navi with the flagship, uh, I'm not doing that, but I do have the 6800 XT recommended which uh, is launching on November 18th. We've even got a mid-range recommendation for the 6800 and the RTX 3080. Uh, we couldn't do the 3060 Ti because that's apparently pushed back or canceled or something. So wow, I've actually covered most of the responses from this, um, except for this last one, Intel. Here's my straw poll for December. I apologize if this one's not very inspired. I'm, I'm just looking for price ranges. Uh, what price are you guys planning to build at? And bear in mind, this is the price of the core components for the PC, not necessarily including uh, peripherals, monitor, keyboard, and mouse. With all that said, uh, time for me to do a quick unboxing. It's not really un unboxing, I'm just taking the outer plastic wrap off of this thing. The 5600X. Fortunately, there are quite a few reviews out on this already. I haven't tested mine yet because as you can see, it's still in the box, but I actually purchased one of these myself. Uh, they're going for $300 MSRP, and these do seem to be the ones that there's the most availability of. They're all sold out right now. I'm gonna double check that again in just a second, but this is a six core, 12 thread processor, uh, but since it is Zen 3 based, the single core performance is still right up there with like a 5900X and a 5950X. It's a slightly slower there because it's not gonna run at quite the same peak frequency, but this chip in a lot of tests keeps up with and sometimes even outperforms Intel's top end 10900K. At $300, this is definitely not cheap for a six core processor, but it is Zen 3 and it's the cheapest of the Zen 3 processors and you still get that gaming performance along with it. So I think for now, this is gonna be the go-to for high-end gaming, especially if you're not planning on spending $500 or more on something like a 3900X or a 5900X. Same kind of story with the RTX 30 series. This is the RTX 3070, which is currently the entry level for the RTX 30 series until Nvidia launches something lower end, which we're not expecting to happen this year. So, so $500 is your starting out point for this card, again, if you can find it in stock. And that means our base price for our GPU and CPU is $800 for this build. 
I used an extra $450 to part everything else out by uh, choosing a motherboard and memory and all that good stuff. And this is all listed here. And I came in just a little over $1,250 at about $1,257. I'm using PC Part Picker to go over these, by the way. Uh, these are linked in the description. And PC Part Picker is warning you that for a B550 chipset motherboard, you will need a BIOS update for these newer CPUs. Fortunately, all the boards that have been coming out in the past three months or so should have at least a G uh, version 1080 on there, which should let you boot with the Ryzen 5 5600X. The motherboard I chose for this though is the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus, and this is about $160 and a very solid motherboard for the price. It has a great power delivery setup, which means that even if you're gonna upgrade to something with more cores than the 5600X down the line, uh, you should be all set, even if you're gonna be doing some overclocking. Also, if you're concerned about getting a board that doesn't have the BIOS that supports the 5000 series CPU, this board supports USB BIOS flashback, which means you can download the BIOS onto a USB, plug it into this port, and then you push the button. You don't you need a CPU or memory installed, and it can still update the BIOS to get you uh, functional with the new processor. Plenty of fan headers on the board. Uh, it's got some RGB functionality if you're into that as well, and it's got a couple M.2 slots, including one with the heat sink down there at the bottom. Next, you're gonna need memory, and I'm still recommending a 16 gig kit uh, to get you up and running, two by eight gigs, and you want DDR4 3600 speed memory. I find this G-Skill kit to be very compatible. It's got decent timings with cast latency 16. It's only about $80, and it does not have blingy RGB or anything like that, but you don't necessarily need blingy RGB in memory. This is all about functionality. And again, that's a kit that's proven to be very compatible with the Ryzen CPU. So you should be able to plug it in, load up the XMP values and be off to the races. You're gonna need some storage and it's really nice that the uh, storage prices are coming down. For less than $50 now, you can get a 500 gig NVMe class SSD. And bear in mind that there's some new versions coming out. There's a Crucial P1 that's actually like five or $6 more than this, but that one doesn't have as good of uh, read speeds in particular. So just double check, reality check uh, and yeah. $48 is a really good price for a nice NVMe drive like that. Next up, we have the graphics card, of course, that I already showed you, the RTX 3070 8 gig Founders Edition. This card should cost $500, but it's out of stock everywhere, everywhere you might possibly look. So this is going to be one of the missing parts from this build and the reason you can't put this system together without a little bit of extra work trying to track down hardware, at least. Now, if there is a silver lining to the GPUs being sold out everywhere, it's that you don't have to necessarily make that excruciating decision right now about whether to get a new AMD Radeon RX 6000 series card or one of the NVIDIA RTX 30 series cards because if you can't buy it right now then you can wait until independent reviews come out for stuff like this but the alternative to the 3070 is going to be the RX 6800 which does have 16 gigs of video memory and it should be available for $580 on November 18th and we have no idea how widely available it will be or how many units there will be or how quickly they will sell out so it's probably going to be a similar situation of people trying to scoop those up and buy them as soon as they're available for sale but that's your alternative to the RTX 30 3070 if you want to wait a couple weeks or if you can't buy an RTX 3070 right now. Rounding things out, I have the Fantex Eclipse P400A Digital. Uh, this case you can actually get for around $70 to $80. The digital version here comes with three RGB fans that are installed in the front, so that gives you a little bit of extra airflow in there. They're nice RGB fans too. This recommendation again is based on performance. This case has really good airflow, so it's going to keep your uh, components nice and cool in there. It's got a pretty intelligently designed internal layout as well. It only has standard USB 3.0 type A ports on the front. So that is something that I might look for uh, in a case. It is something that I went for with the uh, higher end build that we're gonna be talking about, but bear that in mind. We do need a power supply. So we've got the EVGA BR 700 watt 80 plus bronze unit. Power supplies, unfortunately, are still coming in on the a little bit more expensive side relative to what they were a year or two back, but uh, this is a solid 80 plus bronze unit, 700 watts. And of course that all black cabling to make sure that uh, nothing stands out or looks hideous when you put your system together. It is not modular in any way. So bear that in mind. You're going to have all those cables there, but you can tuck any of the extras away down in the basement of your Fantex P400A. So there it is for uh, just a little bit more than $1,250. You can get a really, really nice gaming PC. And this is one of the cool comparisons you can make uh, if you're looking at something like the RTX 2080 Ti from a couple months ago when that was the top end card from NVIDIA. That's a $1,200 card, $1,200 plus card, I should say. And while yes, that was a very overpriced card for its time, the RTX 3070 is kind of in the same ballpark when it comes to performance for $500. So now for just a little bit more than the total cost, or maybe even the same amount of the cost of an RTX 2080 Ti, you can build a complete system, even with the most brandest, newest version of AMD's uh, top-end 6-core processor. But what if you want more than that? More power, more cores, more 
money and everything. Uh, well, the next step up from the RTX 3070 is the RTX 3080 for $700. $200 more, and again, if you can find it at that price, a very solid bang for the buck, especially if you compare it to the RTX 20 series from NVIDIA. For the Ryzen 5000 series, there is the 5800X that also launched, which is an eight core 16 thread processor for $450. And while the 5800X is not bad by any stretch, it's just sort of uh, surrounded on both sides. You've got the 5600X, which you can get for 150 bucks cheaper, and that's gonna give you most of the gaming performance that the 5800X would give you at the same time. If you want more cores and threads, then the 5900X is only $100 more than the 5800X. So for $550 versus $450 for anyone who's building a workstation class machine, 12 cores and 24 threads versus eight cores and 16 threads is going to give you more performance. And for just a hundred bucks more, that makes sense to me. So that's why I'm recommending that today. So once again, with our GPU and our CPU, we have a base cost of $1,150 this time around. And you could take all of the rest of the components from my first build, the $1,250 one, and apply them to these two parts, and that would give you around a $1,700-ish build. But since we're going higher end, I went higher end all around. For one, uh, you're gonna need a CPU cooler uh, with the 5900X. Uh, with the 5600X, I was assuming you're gonna use the inbox one that ships with it, although you'll probably wanna upgrade that one as well at some point, but uh, it's just to sort of get things up and running. Here we have an extra $120 because I went with an all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. I went with a motherboard that costs about 20 bucks more. I went with uh, 32 gigs instead of 16 gigs of that same memory kit. I went with a one terabyte NVMe SSD, the same one, but again, that's uh, 95 bucks instead of 47. I went with a case that costs about 50 bucks more, and I went with a power supply that has a little bit more wattage since uh, for the RTX 3080, we're recommended a 750 watt minimum unit. That brings the total price up to over $2,000, $2,023.39. And let's just run down the parts yet again. The Ryzen 9 5900X, 12 core right up front, currently unavailable of course, but uh, we already know what the performance is, so there's lots of people interested in this CPU. Here is the cooler that I chose because it's on sale right now at Newegg for only $120 and it's usually $160. So take advantage of that if you can right now, but bear in mind there are plenty of air coolers in the $50 to $100 range that might uh, suit you better if you don't want to introduce the variability of having an all-in-one liquid cooler in your system. But the case I chose this time around is a Lian Li uh, PC011 Dynamic. Again, because it's a case I've built in before, really good looking case, plenty of room to work. If you're talking about a $2,000 system, I feel like a $140 case is justified, and I do feel like the extra money you spend with the Lian Li PC011 Dynamic is worth it. That said, maybe also consider an extra $20 to $40 to add some more fans onto this uh, build, because you don't get many with the case. For the motherboard, for 20 bucks more, we got the MSI Mag B550 Tomahawk. Uh, just a really solid board all around. Again, really well, well reviewed. Very good power delivery. You got some nice bonus features like a 2.5 gig LAN. Uh, you still have the BIOS flashback functionality for this board as well. It's also available as an X570 if you need more PCI Express 4.0 capability out of your board. Consider the uh, the X570 version of this board, which should be another 20 or $30. And it does have a front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2 port or whatever that's being called these days, uh, which will be compatible with our case in order to give you functionality out of that front USB-C port for high-speed connectivity. That's cool. I went with the same memory kit. It's just a 16 gig kit this time around. Same speed, same timings and everything. And uh, a great deal again for a 32 gig kit. This is two by 16. So it's only gonna give you two memory sticks. And that means if you wanted to expand to 64 gigs in the future, you could since uh, the motherboard has four DIMM slots. Again, we have the same SSD in this Crucial P2. Uh, this is the one terabyte version. Costs uh, not quite double for more storage, so that makes sense. Here's our GPU, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, which is a 10 gig card. Should be $700, just very hard to find. Of course, there's other RTX 3080 uh, add and board partner models out there available as well. If you really, really, really want an RTX 3080 or 3070 for that matter, one of your best bets right now is EVGA because they have a queue system. So you can basically put your name in line and then as units come in, they give them to people in line. So that's a pretty reasonable way of finding stock. Other than that, you just have to really keep your eye on the retailers when they bring new stock in. Rounding things out, we have a power supply, the EVGA BQ 750 watts. Uh, this one's again a little bit nicer because it's semi-modular. It's still 80 plus bronze, but we want the 750 watt unit in order to match up with our GPU. And at 84 bucks on Amazon, that's not, that's not horrible, although it says out of stock. 
dang it. And that is what you should be able to buy for $2,000 or for right around $2,000, a set of components much like this. And whereas a lot of those parts are in stock, the key ones, the most important ones are not. I put these parts lists together a while ago, so I'm gonna finish off today by checking stock yet again right now. So here's the new egg stock for the 5000 series CPUs and they're all listed as out of stock sold out. And the stupid thing here is there's not an auto notify or anything like that available. So that means uh, they're probably not sure when they have new units coming in. Amazon likewise. And I'll put these links in the description so you guys can double check them yourself for whenever you're uh, watching this video. But 5950X unavailable, 5900X unavailable, 5800X unavailable, 5600X unavailable. Yes, I did purchase one. And then Amazon has landing pages uh, for the RTX 3080s. So you can quickly scroll through all of them and see that none of them are available for sale. 3070 listings, for some reason, they only have two PNY units listed here, but they also say unavailable. And not that I'm recommending a 3090 for these builds because it's a $1,500 card, which, uh, which is much more expensive, but Amazon does have a couple of them listed as in stock, but they're not anything near the price that they should be, which means these are probably being sold by resellers, even used, and, and that's, that's just kind of stupid. So don't buy units that are being resold like this for, for ridiculous markups. It's just, it's just not a good look right now. And then you've also got the Radeon RX 6800 XT, which also has 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory and some other impressive stats, although we don't have independent testing on this yet. It should be launching November 18th for $650, and that would be your alternative to the RTX 3080. So there you have it guys, my two builds, $1,250, $2,000, really powerful systems that you could put together if availability gets better for the CPUs and the GPUs, and who knows, maybe AMD's Radeon launches mid-month will help out with stock availability at least a little bit, or maybe allow you to get your hands on a high-end GPU if you weren't able to get your hands on the RTX 30 series. I hear rumbling in the distance though, which means that it's time to wrap this video up, so thank you all very much for watching, and I will again put links to the parts I'm recommending Ending down in the video's description, as well as links to those straw polls, so don't forget to vote, as well as a link to my store. Go to paulshardware.net and you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all other manner of useful things to wear or drink beverages out of or, or what have you. Do hit that like button if you enjoyed this video on your way out. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this coming at you real soon, and we'll see you guys in the next one.